Our next guest today uh, is somebody I just had an opportunity to meet, William Griffin, uh, Doctor of Dentistry, serves as a Vice President of Dental Ministries at Christian Medical and Dental Associations. He's a graduate from University of Notre Dame, Virginia Commonwealth University School of Dentistry, past board president and dental, <laughs> dental director at Lackey Christian Clinic. What do you do in your spare time? <laughs> Welcome, good to have you here, sir. Thank yeah, you. Dr. Griffin, thank you. It's good to be here with you. Thanks for coming and joining us to kind of round out our time here. Thank you. Uh, that's great work. Christian Medical and Dental Association and the dental side. I think a lot of us maybe know about the medical things. That's a little more prominent. Tell us about the dental arm of CMDA. Well, there's an a awful lot of overlap between the medical and dental realms. Uh, both realms are opportunities for Christian practitioners mm -hmm. to recognize God's calling in their lives and to communicate the truth of God's love to us mm -hmm. uh, through our patients domestically and internationally. So lots of good overlap between the two. Wow, and you've done some, some things internationally. And you tell us about what you're doing currently internationally. What's your engagement? Okay, I've had the privilege of doing about 60 or so mission trips internationally over the years. So far, only 60. <laughs> I didn't wow. get started until I was 41, and I'm trying to make up for lost time. Wow. So. Well, God bless you. Thank you for doing that. And I'm some, sure of, that, some of those trips involve dental students. Uh, others great. are remote teaching trips to third world areas, mm -hmm. and uh, they all have that common ingredient of of recognizing the fact that people are hurting around the world and recognizing both temporal and eternal cures for that hurt. Wow, that, that's temporal and eternal cures. That's wonderful. I like how you put that together, temporal and eternal cures. One of the things that uh, you mentioned is that you bring people with you. And I will tell you, one of my phrases is don't go alone. We really shouldn't go anywhere alone. We either bring somebody with us. Jesus sent us out by two by two. True. Right. And some of the things you're talking about, temporal and eternal, it's also a two by two idea. You're taking two things. You're giving them temporary, temporal things, but yet eternal things. And I know that's your passion, to bring the spiritual aspects into dentistry, into this service. Tell us how you do that on maybe these short-term trips in the dental world. How does that look to bring the spiritual aspects in, into it? Well, as we're treating patients who are acutely aware of particular physical problems they're having, it might be a toothache, it might be a cavity right up front in an area that shows, and that can greatly affect patients in a negative direction. And, and they're seeking that type of care uh, for either pain or a cosmetic situation. And as we're able to minister to them physically, uh, quite often that opens them up to their spiritual need as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus certainly did a lot of that. He would address people's physical needs and also address their spiritual needs. And, Both, yes. And, and he healed a little quicker than we can, but the <laughs> principle is still the same. He has a little bit more power than you do. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little, yes. than all of us put together. Yeah. So you said another thing. You said you really didn't get engaged with this until you were 41. And I know that was just last year, so these have been 60 <laughs> trips. It's a lot in one year. Wow, how do you ever see your family? But so how did you, one of the themes of this conference, one of the ideas is to be inspired. How did you get inspired at 41? What was different at 41 that inspired you than when you were 35 or 40? Well, I'm really glad that you asked that. It was a, a, a Christian colleague in dentistry who invited me to go with him. He needed one more dentist to oversee Excellent. dental students for a, for a mission trip. Mm. And uh, I was able to get some time away from my office and joined him. And I think it was that uh, uh, fraternal uh, relationship I had with him that got me going on that first trip. And for that reason, I spend a lot of time inviting others because Excellent. it is such a blessing both to the people you treat and also to be able to utilize your skills for God's purposes. Wow, so on these 60 trips or so, however many you've done, how many times have you invited someone else? Do you think it's half or more? Everyone. Everyone. The question is how many do I invite? <laughs> Amen, yeah. Amen. Jesus didn't send them out one by one. Quick he sent people out two by two. Yeah, tell yes, us. Yes, he did. Quick example, I had a couple of students with me, uh, dental students from the, from the uh, University of Louisville a few years ago. Mm -hmm. They are now dentists and they joined me in India as dentists last month. So it's beautiful to see wow. students catch that vision for international missions uh -huh. and continue to more difficult places throughout their careers. Wow, and they get that introduction. You've introduced them to that. So for someone who may be saying, wow, I guess maybe I could go, 
how would you encourage them to take that step or what would you say to them? Two things in particular. One is that first trip might ought to be somewhere a bit more predictable, Caribbean, okay. some, Central America, something like that, where generally things are more uh, expected in advance okay. to see whether or not that's the Lord's calling on your life. And Excellent. then secondly, as you've referenced, to go with someone you know, to go with an organization that you can trust okay. uh, so that uh, your experience has less variables. Every trip has variables, okay. but fewer early on is probably a good way to test the waters. A few, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think if you have too many variables in that first trip, mm -hmm. then maybe you're also your last trip. <laughs> Clearly that wasn't the case for you. True. Uh, Dr. Griffin, your work with CMDA and how you've engaged other people, you haven't gone alone. You've mm -hmm. embraced, you've discipled, you've brought people along, you've grown, you've mm -hmm. expanded the fold of those who are willing to serve because of you. Mm -hmm. so, so thank you so much. It's really amazing and it's an honor to be with you and to hear of your passion. I hope others have been inspired as well. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. Thank you for the time. Thank yeah. you. Dr. Griffin, thank you very much. Dr. Thielander, thank you it's as pleasure. well for your extra time and effort uh, to be here at uh, Mission Control. We're getting ready to head inside the auditorium now for our final main session here at the M3 conference, live from Houston, Texas.